joining us this morning. Uh, this is the 18th day of November 2020. I welcome all the directors. Thank you for coming out for this very important event. I particularly want to welcome Grace, who joined KCCA together with me on the same day. Our Deputy Executive Director will be joining us soon. He has gone over to the Ministry of Justice for a meeting. But in a special way, let me welcome the media, <coughs> members of the fourth estate. We thank you for the support that you always offer KCCA, not only today, but always. And uh, through these 100 days, we have seen your support. I think what I'm going to do is uh, just to share some highlights and then after that you can ask questions, some I'll answer and some I'll invite uh, the directors to answer. We have here health, legal, internal audit, revenue, treasury, education, uh, strategy, gender, uh, human resource. So everybody is here. You can ask uh, any question and they'll be able to answer. So if all your gadgets are here, we can uh, then start or continue. <laughs> days ago we walked into City Hall and uh, I walked in as the Executive Director of Kampala Capital City Authority. I took oath at a ceremony presided over by the Head of Public Service, Mr. John Metala, and it was attended by the Minister of Kampala, Betty Amongi, and the Lord Mayor, Elias Urukwabo. One of the things that I said then and I still say up to now, is that we shall lead from the front and we shall lead by example. No duplicity and no dishonesty. This method of work has been my clarion call to all staff since I started. I've met virtually all the staff and I always say let's work by the big seven. The big seven is a method of work and it says this. Let's lead from the front. Let's build bridges for peace. Let's fast track service delivery. Let us use a participatory approach. Let us uphold good values. Let us serve the diversity and let us be good stewards. I am glad to share this method of work throughout my tenure. This is what I stand by. We have come to a place where there is a great vision statement, a vibrant, attractive, and sustainable city, and with great values, and we want to build on that with a great method of work. When we arrived at work on Monday, 3rd August, we hit the ground running, despite the limitations of the COVID-19 pandemic. There were several pertinent things that needed to be achieved immediately. Top on the agenda was ensuring that the strategic plan was in place to guide our journey. Our teams here at KCCA worked very hard and uh, on, uh, on 29th September, we launched the five-year strategic plan to the right of our Prime Minister who was the guest of honor at the launching ceremony. The plan highlighted four pillars. The first one is citizen engagement. We believe we cannot do any work without the citizens being involved. Not involved just as onlookers, but in initiation of the plans, in brainstorming, and in unpacking the plans. Secondly is a quality of life. Every city dweller looks for uh, a life that is better than what when they came into the city. So we will be unpacking several projects and programs to improve the quality of life. The third is city resilience. Can our city be resilient to overcome anything that can come against it? Right now we are dealing with a COVID pandemic. We get floods, fires. Can we overcome this? And finally, economic growth. A better GDP, a better income 
for all city dwellers. <clears throat> we now have the momentous task of mobilizing the funding for these projects in the strategic plan. The government of Uganda budget will fund quite a number of them, but we are also currently engaged with the consultants, the city's infrastructure for growth consultants, to ensure we have a financial strategy for the next five years. One of the things we have achieved, and I'm very glad about, is that we've carried out a staff verification exercise. We inherited a staff of approximately 1,500. One the human resource verification exercise caused some anxiety among the staff. Some thought that maybe we are doing this to sack them, but that, is, that was not the goal, and it didn't happen, except for those whose uh, contracts had already expired. Our goal was to know who is our staff. Who are they? Where do they work? What are their competences? And how can we better use the resource that we have? And even though the initial exercise is finished and we have a report, we shall keep on doing this because it's a huge number and we are working in very difficult times where only 30% uh, is uh, the staff deployed according to the guidance from Ministry of Public Service. Another exciting event that we have done in these 100 days is unveil the elegant Impala Monument. As you know, the Impala symbolizes the origin of the name Kampala. And the sculpture is located just outside our gates uh, at the KCCA premises. We have worked in partnership with Uganda Wildlife Authority and our team at uh, the Directorate of Education. And we unveiled the Wildlife Street, which is a long, old Kira Street. I don't know whether some of you have seen it, but it has 11 gigantic and magnificent animal sculptures, including the elephant, the giraffe, the zebra, and eight others. The rationale is that we should preserve and celebrate the history and the heritage of Kampala. So take time to walk along uh, Wildlife Street from Molago Roundabout all the way up to Old Kira Police Station and enjoy these animals. The other exercise we've done in the 100 days is uh, the assets verification exercise. KCCA assets are worth over 550 billion. And it was imperative that as a new administration, we verify where are these assets, in what state are they. The exercise has been successful and we've almost finished 80%. It has uncovered areas that need to be streamlined in KCCA assets management protocol, and we are working out guidelines to help us do that. We are also going to take tough measures on this so, and our land management unit is tasked to streamline this area. Our promise to Kampala is to be great stewards, not just good stewards of what has been entrusted to us. We want to deliver and increase its value. Getting to know the staff that we have has kept me on the go. We've been meeting staff together with HR in all the 10 directorates across all the five divisions. The key people we work with fall in several categories. First, we have the technical staff, approximately 1,500 people. They include directors and their deputies, managers, supervisors, officers, and a whole array of office support. Then we have the political teams, which is a different category. We have the mayors and the councillors and the speakers in the five divisions. Each division has approximately 80 to 100 people or even more when you include all the casual staff. I must say I've engaged with almost 95% of our staff. We counted how many meetings we've held in these 100 days and the 100 and 55 meetings across the five divisions. 
There are two questions that are posed to our people in all my meetings with staff. The first one says, what is it that we are doing right in KCCA that makes KCCA a great brand? And especially that question was addressed to people who have been here for 11 years and we got a lot of good answers. The second question is, what do we need to change? Which unleashed a great conversation across board. These questions have also brought in two complaints which I think I would like to share with you. One was the discrepancy in the hiring protocol. We have people who are temporary staff, we have some who are permanent staff, and we have the majority who are called, call themselves the casuals. Staff have also complained that there is little room for career advancement or for promotion in our hierarchy. We shall resolve these contradictions, that is our resolution as a team, with the support of the appointing authority, the political leadership in the city, the Ministry of Public Service and the Public Service Commission. It's a monumental task, but we are committed to ensuring that all our staff have equity, have natural justice in the way we hire and the way they exit. The other thing we've done in these 100 days is inspect the KCCA projects. We have a very magnificent project at Chanja Agricultural Resource Center. This center practices urban farming. And we, have, we receive up to 10,000 guests annually. Our staff and extension workers are supporting urban dwellers to utilize their homes to grow vegetables in very innovative ways using the little spaces they have, using potted uh, uh, pots and other ways. And I invite you to visit this place. If you are a city dweller here, you'll learn uh, very innovative ways of growing vegetables. The landfill at Chesi is full to capacity now. Still, there are about 600 people drawing their daily income from sorting rubbish and taking it for recycling. But the good news is now we have a new landfill at Dundu. Dundu is in Mokono district. You approach it through Kayunga Road and uh, it measures 135 acres. We want to use that new site. I've visited it. It's a beautiful site. We want to use it for solid waste management, not just dumping, but turning the waste into good use. Solid waste man management, I must say, is one of the biggest challenges that I've found as a new leader in Kampala. Kampala has a turnover of four tons of garbage every single day. But KCCA has a capacity to collect only 60%. So that means that about 40% of our garbage is not collected in a way that we can recognize as a leadership. Both the organic waste and plastics can be used to generate income, but uh, we need funding to make this happen, and that's what we are hoping that Dundu will do for us the new site. We also need garbage trucks. Our desire, our dream is that we should have a truck for each of the 99 parishes of Kampala, but now we have only 15, which is far below capacity. Another thing that we have done during these 100 days is uh, undertake the repairs of the old taxi park so that they can be, the taxi park can have a better surface for the taxi operators to work on. The major floor has been renovated and the contractor has promised that we sh he shall hand over the site before the end of this year. Our dream, our desire, our plan is that the taxi park shall be elevated to international standards, that we shall have a new system that requires parking cards or coupons and cloakings. It will also have delineated areas for taxis and pedestrians. And on the sites, we believe that uh, we will build shops, uh, high-rise shops, but at the bottom, the taxi park uh, uh, users can make use of it. In the first week uh, of our 100 days, the his Excellency the President 
launched the construction of Luigi and Nakamiro channels. This, we believe, will address the heavy floods in Waise. It's project, projected to be finalized before the end of 2021. The poor drainage system in downtown Kampala is a source of constant irritation, especially during the rainy season. Some of these are historical problems caused by construction on drainage channels, and it is, uh, it is uh, a double-pronged problem. Partly it's the indiscipline of technical people in issuing building permits, permits indiscriminately, but also for city dwellers who construct illegal structures where they are not supposed to construct them. One of the most exciting uh, projects that we did during the 100 days was to launch the Kampala Weyonji campaign in September 2020. This campaign says every last Saturday of the month, the residents are encouraged to engage in a cleaning campaign around their homes, around the places they dwell. In, uh, in September, we had it in Wankoko, Wankoko and in Nakawa market. In October, we were in Rubaga, in a place called uh, Kaboa. And the next one is going to happen on 28th November, uh, and we shall be in Kawempe. The mayors in the five divisions are mobilizing their teams for this campaign, and we urge city dwellers, wherever you are, every last Saturday of the month is a cleaning day. We want Kampala people to come out of their homes with their rakes and their spades and their hoes, and we clean around our homesteads. This is, we don't want it to be left to just the KCC staff or the cleaners, but everyone, everyone should join in. The 100 day plan dedicated hours to meeting key stakeholders in central government, in the executive, in the legislature, in the judiciary. We've met, we've met stakeholders in business. We've visited uh, faith leaders, politicians, and many others. Our philosophy is that we must work with everyone because citizen engagement is non-negotiable. The people have to be involved in the development of their city. The city belongs to all of us and we can all contribute in the running of the city. I was particularly thankful that we were able to connect with the key stakeholders in our accounting system, the Accountant General, the the other people around money, the Minister of Finance, uh, Auditor General, uh, the Resident Commissioners, the Speaker of Parliament, of course His Excellency the President, and many main ministers, the IGG. We are thankful that the stakeholders in Kampala are working with us to deliver on the promise of a better city. One of the things that we are really celebrating in the 100 days is the implementation of the presidential directives. There were two that came to us. One was concerning the Centenary Park, and the directive was to make the place available for the flyover project to commence. And uh, I'm glad to report that that was made possible. We thank Nalongo Estates for peacefully handing over the site to UNRWA so that they can now commence on this very important national project. As you know, this has been a place, a, a, a project, not a project, but a site uh, which has been contentious, so we celebrate the peaceful handover and the commencement of the flyover project. The other presidential directive that came to us in the 100 days was concerning the markets. The president directed that uh, we should ensure that the vendors are able to run their own markets with the support of KCCA as uh, managers. The markets is, uh, the market, one of the challenges in the markets was the regulate the fees that are being charged from the vendors, very high fees. KCCA has developed the guidelines to follow in implementing the presidential directive. We have uh, outlined the fees 
And I'm also glad to say we have engaged with the vendors and the leadership in Owino, St. Valley Kutembe. We have engaged the leaders in Nakasero Market, and we have also engaged the leaders in Kiseka Market. Today we shall be in Nakawa, and we shall be in Mukolobi, and all the places where we have engaged, we are coming to resolution on how the market should be run. Only yesterday I was here with all the leaders, uh, the current leaders in management at Owino, and we agreed on uh, our way forward on how we shall be working together. So I want to thank the market vendors and their leadership for supporting us to ensure that there is trade order, there is peace, and there is uh, um, a working together between Bamufuna Mbola and Bamufuna quickly. One of the processes we want to ensure happens is that there is a credible register of who are the vendors in each of the markets. Until that happens, we shall not go into elections because elections without a credible registry, register uh, can be very problematic. So I'm thankful that we've been able as a team to implement this very important presidential directive. We've faced a lot of challenges, and uh, before you become an administrator at KCCM, you, your eyes may not be so open to the challenges, but in these uh, three months, I've seen so many challenges that we have as a city. First of all, we have a very limited budget. <clears throat> the capital city contributes 60% of the GDP, but we receive less than 2% of the national budget. We produce 60% and use only 2% of the national budget. We believe that 10% of the national budget should remain in the capital city if we are going to make sense of the developments that people need that the capital city can celebrate and be proud of. We have sprawling slums and informal settlements. When I walked through the slums during the Weyonje uh, campaign, the cleaning campaign, you can see that many, many homes are in, have a lot of basic needs. Basic needs, water, cleaning, uh, cleaning tools. About 250 of our homes are, are in these informal settlements and they're really, really congested. There is, there is flooding and uh, there's a need to invest in these places so that our people can dwell in better places. We have challenges of lighting the city. Many places, many roads are in the dark. And uh, we have uh, challenges of getting vendors off the streets in a peaceful way and relocating them to places where they can trade from. We have uh, challenges of littering and uh, um, a spoiling of the green spaces that uh, have, uh, had already been established, incomplete roads, noise pollution, open manholes, delayed building permits. We have a lot of complaints from our city dwellers that are now coming to my phone directly. We have illegal structures, very few trail toilets, traffic congestion. And as if that is not enough, we have COVID-19, which we are all facing in our various ways. And to crown it all, we are in a political season. And there are things that you want to do, but the season itself lends some difficult in, 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 in implementing this. I'm very glad that Casita, the city, the, the business people, are in dialogue with us on how we can overcome some of these things, especially the problem of vending on the streets and establishing trade order. As I end, I can, all I can say is that we need to be resolute. And we need to look for solutions. We cannot have a self-pity party. We are not going to be people who just complain. We are going to be a people who constantly look for solutions beyond the normal solutions. We will work with what we have and we'll make it go a long way. Our team is very, very capable of delivering. I think SCCA has some of the most highly qualified people that I've come to work with in my whole career. 
and they are willing and they are hard working. We'll keep working hard and we welcome feedback. We don't mind feedback, whether it is negative, whether it is constant. Feedback makes us better. We have the support from the three arms of government, of central government, as well as our city political leadership, and we are very, very thankful. We meet on a weekly basis with the city, the mayor and his cabinet, which enables us to unpack our plans very peacefully. Our technical teams have continued to work in very difficult COVID-19 atmosphere, and I really salute our technical teams and I salute our staff for the great work that they are doing. My message to Kampala is that this is our city. This is our beautiful city. This is our home. Let us work together to give it the character we aspire, the character that we desire. Together we can make this city safe. Together we can make it vibrant. Together we can make it attractive. Together we can make it clean and continuously developing. Together we can overcome the vices of illegal constructions, noise pollution, littering. These can be resolved by all of us participating and doing our part. Let me close with a statement that I've used these last hundred days over and over. We are bigger than our differences. We are bigger than the things that divide us. We can overcome them. I thank you very much, and I thank you for working with us these hundred days. Thank you, uh, This is the, the part where we have to uh, do it. To translate. Oh my God. <laughs> Everything?